go, Brave Nation. This bout is three, five minute rounds in a super welterweight fight. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of one win and no losses. He stands 186 centimeters tall and weighs already 78.9 kilograms. Representing Crow Cop Team and fighting out of Zagreb, Croatia, by way of Kosovo, please welcome Kuti Begay! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man from mixed martial artist making his professional debut tonight. He stands 185 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 79.4 kilograms. Representing KHK Team Bahrain and Boxing Squad Nice and fighting out of France. Give it up for Axel Sola! Your referee is Reven Light Saber. Big thanks to Nordic Palace and Spa, our valued hospitality partner. You can see Kuti Bay guy, the elder by five years, more of the striker. Axel Sola did say to me he believes at some stage he will take this fight to the ground, but he wants to play on the feet for a little bit, trying to see what the power is like of the Mirko Krokop protege. Sola's going to be looking out for those kicks, and so am I. Again, interesting. Both guys coming out of that southpaw stance. That'll be interesting for one another and may take a little bit of an adjustment because in your gym, you're used to fighting guys that are more often than not orthodox. So to fight another southpaw as a southpaw is a very interesting prospect. Exactly. They're trying to fight at range right now. They're not stepping into the fire. They're feeling each other out because, as you said, this is a little bit of an unusual circumstance for both of them. Axel Sola trying to come over the top with he has that left hand loaded. There's the shot. How can the striker defend it? Hands clasped by Kuti. Big takedown. Almost spiked himself on the head. Needs to be careful. Let's see what kind of work he can do now from that half guard position. A position we've seen popularized in mixed martial arts. More of an anchor position now, Kirik. Fighters seem to be happy to sit in that half guard and land damage. It is. In, in grappling, the bottom half guard is the single most productive position that's available for, to you. It creates the most opportunities for points. Here, it's something like half mount or possibly worse. Needs to be wary of being mounted here. He's straightening out those legs, trying to lock them down. But it looks like Sola is just slowly, methodically taking his time, using the end step of his leg to widen the guard a little bit to, to pop that leg through into the mount position. Muffler in place. I like to see that. That is a legal move. Brave Nation, when you cover the opponent's mouth and nose with your open hand, it forces him to adjust his hands and create striking opportunities. In a situation like that, you'd like to see Kuti Bay guy try and get to the fence, try and put his hand down on post, but... Again, just real slow, methodical pressure being applied by the two-time IMAF World Silver Medalist, Axel Sola. There's about a half dozen basic strategies that the bottom player can use at this point. One of them is simply to hold on and wait for a stand-up. That's largely what we've seen from Kuti Begay, although he is starting to strike a little bit. Nice little pot shot, elbows landed there, framing off the face from Axel Sola. But right now, Kuti doing a good job of sort of maintaining that half guard position, but you'd like to see him get right onto his hip, try and get that leg in for the full guard. He's starting to do it. Kuti wants to get on his side and try and wall, oh, try the, and wall climb. There's a cut just above the eye of Kuti Bay guy. May have been one of those snapping elbows we saw. And surely if you're Axel Sola, that's going to be the pinpoint mark that you focus in on. Your hands have to be like magnets. Human reaction time for a trained athlete is about a third of a second. The movement time between an elbow and a head that's, say, 8 to 10 inches apart is well inside of that. Those elbows can rain down if they're set up well, and there's really no stopping it. And seeing your blood trickle down your face as a fighter on the bottom, mentally, does that have any kind of impact on the fighter, Kirik? Mentally it does, but also it's physiologically. If blood gets into the eye, it becomes more difficult to see, and, of course, you, you need two eyes to fight. So right now, this is probably the most advantageous position with regards to that cut that Kuti could be in. As soon as he stands up and he's upright, that blood is going to come down the face, potentially into the eye. The problem, Phil, is that if he doesn't start trying to stand, another elbow is going to land on the other side of his head, and he's going to be bleeding on both sides. Axel Sola doing a good job of just maintaining position here, not making any unnecessary mistakes. He's winning the fight. He's in the top position. He's opened his opponent up, and now he's just happy to do work from this position. 
Cootie Bay guy has got a, a large number of op options. He can try and flip his opponent over with what's called a sweep, which you're seeing a little attempt at there. He can try and get to his opponent's back. Oh, we got a Dagestani handcuff coming up. You'd like to see him try and reach over the top and try and get the, the, the Kimura grip, because as we say, almost every show, you can use that not just for the submission, but also as a transitionary weapon. Has that hand, does Axel Sola just around the waist, immobilizing the movement of Kuti Bay guy. And right, oh, you could just, in an empty arena, you can just hear those elbows slicing through the guard. Nasty, nasty work. And again, as making your pro debut, this is the first time he's ever had an opportunity to throw them in a fight. I guarantee you he's been trying this in the gym with his best friends in a headgear for a long time now. This is excellent ground and pound. Just cuts through seamlessly into the mic position. Mouth. And those elbows are getting through, but Cootie Big Eye doing a good job. Trying to work for the up kick, but Axel Sola just grabbing the legs, may sweep them to the side, and comes over the top with a Clean huge shot. shot. Transitions right back into the mic position, working for the head arm triangle, Carrick. This, this looks may tight. be it. That is not the escape to an arm triangle choke. And I like what Kuti's doing. He's keeping his knee just on the hip. Hips are dropping now. Just on the hip of Kuti Begai, stopping him from turning in. And this looks very, very tight. Cage might be a slight impediment. Can Kuti Begai hold on for the last 10 seconds? Kuti's defending by flipping his own leg up, getting a gable grip around that leg. He may be oh, he's hot it. Oh. Seconds to go. The fight is over four minutes 59 seconds of the first round that is absolutely crazy and that speaks to the type of squeeze that axel sola has phil did we just see a brave combat federation record broken that was quite literally that was the equivalent of in basketball a buzzer beater he had the choke and literally with a second left Oh, I wonder if the corner of Kuti Bay guy were trying to communicate that, but that must have been inescapably tight. Phil, what we see here is his body collapsing. You watch the hand explode away. What happened was he lost control of his muscles and he did the only thing that he could do, and that is tap. The alternative was nap, and his body was 99% of the way there already, as you can see. Huge win for Axel Sola. Axel Sola holding on to his own shoulder a little bit in the cage. It'll be interesting to see if he has some kind of impediment here. But if anything, that just makes the, makes the performance all the more impressive. And there's that huge cut elicited by the elbow just above the eye of Kuti Begai. Phil, I have studied up on cuts and the posi position of that particular cut is relatively safe. Few stitches by a plastic surgeon, he's gonna be just fine. Back in the gym within 30 days. Probably a little bit of frustration on the, the face there of Kuti Bay guy. And is he gonna be lamenting that as a professional fighter looking back on that? Will he be lamenting that there was one second left, Kirik? He had no choice, his body was collapsing, his lights were just about to go out. He barely had any consciousness at that moment. Nothing left to do, but another first round finish at Brave 49. Carlos Kramer, make it official, sir. Okay, Brave Nation, this explosive historic night just keeps getting better. This bout comes to an end at four minutes and 59 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by head and arm triangle from KHK Team Bahrain, Axel Sola. And held aloft. It's okay to smile, big man. You've just won your professional debut. You should be very happy with a performance like that. And as a pro, that's pretty much as close as you get to a flawless debut performance, Kirik. I would call that one flawless for this young man. And once again, I cannot wait to see him again in the Brave Combat Federation cage. Phil, walk us through this Green Hill replay. It was pretty much methodical from that takedown. Clasp the hands, just works from that half guard position, slicing his opponent up with devastating elbows, some hellacious ground and pound. You can see the huge cut he opens up over the eye of Kuti Bay guy. And just throws the legs to the side, a huge shot. Absolutely fantastic performance from Axel Sola from KHK Team Bahrain and Boxing Squad in Nice, France.
The Irish Thunder, Phil Campbell, is now positioning himself to conduct a distanced interview. Stand by, Brave Nation. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with a successful Axel Sola who makes his professional debut here tonight, gets the win beautifully. Axel, how are you feeling? Good. First of all, I would like uh, to thank His Highness Sheikh Khalid for making this brave event. It's allowing a fighter to move forward in their career, to make money for them and their family. So thank you for that. I want also to thank him for allowing me to train here in KHK with the champion of tomorrow and to fight inside the Brave Combat Federation. Of course, the realization of this event is made with the help of Gustavo and Mr. Shaheen, so thank you. Secondly, sorry Chris, I want to thank uh, Eldar Eldarov, the head coach of uh, KHK. He did a great training camp for me and all the other fighters of KHK. I can't wait to come back there again to train for another fight. It was a great experience. Thirdly, I want to thank my family, my beautiful girlfriend for supporting me in my choice of life. And fourthly, I want to thank Mr. Dushan Bozic, in a way, no need to say. Was that as clean, was that in your mind, could that professional debut have gone better? Was that exactly what you wanted to do? Um, I know my opponent was a very good kickboxer, mm -hmm. so um, I was uh, waiting him to make the mistake, to overreach for me. Uh, I was surprised he was not putting as much pressure as I was expected, so I see him uh, once again uh, we are without moving against the fence. I just take the takedown and score the points. He gives me the submission and that's it. How did it feel for the first time in your professional career to be able to throw those elbows? You opened up a big cut over his eyebrow. How good did it feel to get to use those weapons? The feeling is really good. Uh, the, the only problem is uh, I had a bit of injury on my body, so I was not that solid as usual. But anyway, great experience, great uh, sensation. I can't wait to do again. And did you realize just how late it was in the round when you were sinking up that beautiful head arm triangle? Um, I had trouble to finish it actually. I don't know why I need to watch the tape again. I think I was not able to extend fully to put a maximum of pressure on the choke. But uh, I finally get it uh, on the last time, on the last second of the round. So I'm happy to have a finish on the first round. Well, congratulations on a genuinely fantastic professional debut. We're all very excited to see what you do next. Brave Nation, Axel Solar.